You know, there's this idea floating around, which I totally buy. It's this notion that we are already cyborgs. You know, people are so dystopian when they think about the future of technology. What they fail to realize is that we have been in a feedback loop, in a self-amplifying feedback loop with our technology since the origin of language and stone tools, for Christ's sakes. We use our technologies to extend the boundaries of what we are. Our tools are our exoskeletons. They are scaffoldings, extending our thought, reach, and vision, as Andy Clark says. There's a book by Andy Clark called Natural Born Cyborgs, and him and David Chalmers, they coined the extended mind thesis, which is this idea that we're literally extending the boundaries of the human mind with these technologies. Our smartphones are extensions of our cognition. They are examples of distributed intelligence. iPhone, therefore I am. I mean, literally, and th this idea that, that our second skin is our technology, it's our turtle shell, it's our exoskeleton, is, is, is sort of blurs the boundary of sort of saying that there's nature and then there's technology, and that in fact, it's all on a continuum, and we just smack in the middle between the born and the made, as Kevin Kelly says. But even Nietzsche used to say, man is a bridge and not an end. We are a means towards self-extension. Our technologies become part of our skin. We must get over our skin bag bias. The biological skin bag is just one membrane. Our cells have membranes too, but our body's still a part of us and our tools are a part of us. We transcend membranes. We extend ourselves. That's what we do. We are already cyborgs. It's something that I think is, is going to be quite important. Um, and and, and it's, there's not, I don't know of a company that's working on it seriously, is, um, is a neural lace. Um, so okay, going, going back to the AI situation, um, like this is quite an important uh, quite an important debate. Like the, if you assume any rate of advancement in AI, um, we will be left behind by a lot. Um, and so then we could be in like, you know, benign situation, but the, even the benign situation, if you have some, you know, if you have ultra intelligent AI, um, we would be, you know, so, the, so far below them in intelligence that it would be, would be like, you know, a pet, basically. Pet, that's what I was thinking. Like a pet. Cat, like a cat. Like a cat. Elon It'd be like a house cat. cat. Yeah, right. it would be like the house cat. Right. Um, and, um, yeah, it's not, that's, it's not the end of the world, you know. It's just, you well, know, sort of pet. You've seen the movie. It could be. Yeah. It could be. It could be. Um, the, you know, so that, but that, honestly, that, that, would, that would be the benign scenario. Mm -hmm. um, and So house cat is okay? I mean, I don't love the idea of being a house cat. Okay. Um, <laughs> but... But that, so what's the solution? Yeah, so I think the um, I, I think I think it I think it's to essentially I think one of the solutions the solution that, that seems maybe the best one is to have an AI layer. Um, if you think of like you've got your limbic system, um, your cortex, and then um, a digital layer, a sort of a third layer above the cortex. Um, that um, could work work well and symbiotically with with you. I mean, just as your cortex works symbiotically with your limbic system, your did, sort of a third digital layer could work symbiotically with the rest. This of is you. something that's in, in surgically inserted or bred so, into the species, or what? The, the fundamental limitation is input output. So uh, we we already have uh, we, we're already a cyborg. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
Yes, Ben. I'm here. Oh, it hurts so bad. It's going to hurt. It's not going to be easy. But... Ah! Oh. Whatever that energy is, it's eating him from the inside out. He's going into cardiac arrest. It's racing up his spinal cord. Then we can't wait. Silas, the risk. What choice do I have, Marl? This room contains technology recovered from across the globe. I've studied and logged nearly everything in here. I've taken apart and rebuilt most of it. It can save my son's life. It has to. will subside as soon as the Promethean finishes replacing the damaged tissue. Promethean skin grafts? His body could reject them completely. It won't. I've injected the nanites. Activate them. They're untested. We recovered them. Do it! 